Hello and welcome back to another episode of War Tales, the Pirates DLC. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the wonderful playthrough on Extreme Difficulty. We have conquered a couple of uh, the islands. Well, matter of fact, we only conquer, uh, conquered one. And I did a bit of housekeeping, mainly because we wanted to do the Tomb of the Ancients and maybe also go over to this island here in order to uh, to get a little bit more info on what's over here. And we needed torches. I think we do have an okay amount of torches. We can create always a few more. But more importantly, I spent hours to find the right person and here we are let me introduce you to Anmuhat uh, who does have a good willpower or rather a great willpower a low wage and is um, a perfect candidate for a fisherman mainly because that's critical hit chance and willpower in one and we haven't gotten a fisherman and it is a role on our boat so uh, let's look into uh, Anmuhet and we really need to give him a better name let me come up with one and as is tradition on our channel I am picking subscribers that are actually active in the comment section Noodle Keeper uh, you have been drafted, and boy, oh boy, you look like the young Django who's not taking shit from anyone. So, let's talk about the pugilist and what I have understood. For starters, it seems to be a dexterity-based class, um, and we do have three specializations. One is wrestler with medium armor, one is bruiser with medium armor, and the other one is slayer with light armor. Given our team, I don't want another uh, just light armor uh, squishy. So the whole arterial uh, precision, although uh, the option that it applies poison is fantastic. I really like that. Goes well with the poison build and then the poison dagger on top of it. I think there is actually a really, really good synergy there. However. I also think that if we do have five people on the battlefield, uh, we will need to have enough frontline. And really, Fluffy Gen uh, Janitor is mainly trying to get behind uh, the enemies and hit multiples. So we either need Wrestler or we need Bruiser. Let's look at, look at uh, the, uh, the abilities. So the Pugilist has an attack stance and a defense stance and uh, they can change it once per round as a free action and as you can imagine the defense stance gives more defensive abilities, the attack stance gives more attack uh, abilities. Kind of plays like Udyr from League of Legends from what I'm seeing and the Bear Claws really hammer home that point. I like that idea with the stances, really really cool. So Wrestler allows uh, to deal damage to a target and swap places with it. Let that sink in. There are a couple of situations where I think he could take over instead of someone else, but then you could also have taunt. The changing of places could sometimes be helpful if you want to kind of reorganize uh, the enemies. If you do it with a uh, critical stance, uh, it has a massive crit uh, bonus, mm, it's okay. And position wouldn't be bad, that essentially means we're having a decent amount of guard. Currently, I am not sure how much guard do we currently have. Uh, none, because we don't have an armor. Okay, anyways, um, I think I like Bruiser more, deals a bit more damage two times, ignores guard, and if you use the attack stance, half of the guard comes on top, and if you use the defense stance, it applies fragility for one round, which means 30% uh, more damage. So that's great against bosses, that's also good against just guard 
um, people uh, because uh, we could essentially be a tank killer with it and on top of it we're even getting a little bit more dexterity and a bit more critical hit so that seems good um, and for level 5 we do have the option to either first attack and battle applies both stance effects which would uh, mean in our case uh, we could ignore guard and apply fragility or each round this unit must attack at least once in a given stance uh, if successful they perform an attack of opportunity so that's essentially uh, one additional attack And this here allows us to go from defensive into offensive, back into defensive stance. Not sure if we need adaption. Uh, it might be worth it. I will just play around with the stance a little bit from uh, just reading through it. Personal challenge looks good. Because you get an extra attack and you can relatively clearly provoke it. Cool. So what we want to do is whenever this unit engages into combat, you gain one. That seems legit. We want the bruiser build. And I would like uh, to... Each round, this unit must attack at least once in a given stance. If successful, they perform an attack of opportunity. Well, that's not bad. Focus might also be not too bad, but both first attack off the battle okay so that's just once whilst this here uh, will last for a couple more rounds not that our battles are super long but still okay good so in terms of getting the rest ordered willpower is 15 which is good enough then we need movement plenty thereof I think 16 movement is still not enough uh, if he needs to take every single round but we'll get there. Noodle Keeper has just started. Give him a head, which now damage increases against poisoned units. Would be funny uh, to get more poisoning then. Currently, we do have uh, extra critical uh, strike chance, and I just crafted. Uh, this armor, he looks badass. Compared to our tank. Hmm. Well, not seeing a lot of damage reduction yet. The helmet here is really good. The extra guard is helpful. Yeah, we need a good, uh, a better helmet for Noodle Keeper, and then uh, it'll eventually work out. We just started equipping him, so no need to be uh, too afraid about his stats yet. And he is one level lower than everybody else. Okay, so five, uh, five person uh, team from now on. We uh, got our first bruiser and we could appoint another uh, lieutenant, which essentially means he can help everybody to get uh, to receive more to receive uh, more Valor points, I'm wondering. 
I think you are a good lieutenant. Fantastic. Good. Since you haven't come here to just see me around, I think what we want to do is we want to explore this island over here and then um, I'm not sure if we do it uh, within this episode, but generally speaking, we want to go to the temple. So, I am curious how Noodle Keeper. Wait, do they have on their card? Stand back, peasants. These valuable commodities are only for those who can afford them. Yeah, well, it's not that great. Here you might take his old uh, robes. And we're good. We got 560 gold pieces in... We got wages to pay, so I would suggest we're starting sooner than later. And since we now have fishermen, uh, there is going to be a plethora of uh, food. 30 fisher hook. Okay, we don't have bait at the moment. Let's test uh, the fishing. Fishing is one of those skills that I would sacrifice with a smaller uh, team, but it is good standalone skill for the stat boosts. Uh, you get willpower. You can essentially uh, create food, which saves money. And on top of it, you get crit chance. Good. Time to uh, explore the island over there. And with the fisher on board, theoretically we would be able to uh, fish bigger, uh, bigger schools of fish. There were a couple of them. Good. Onwards. Okay, apparently we've just already fished. That is quite convenient. We're just riding over them. And we're automatically getting fish. Well, I can tell you guys, you better start liking the fish because that's all you get for the rest of this adventure. Next idea would be to upgrade our... Oh, wow. Well, here we go. Let's fight to upgrade our boat. Uh, I'm already saving for that. Good. Yet another combat. Let's hope this one is fast, because the main reason why I didn't want more people was because the combats might not be fast enough.
We good? I like slow. Fantastic. Just out of curiosity. That would hit all three, right? Yep. Alright. Very nice hit. getting some damage in return but I think the overall damage was worth it all right weakening him Zero damage. Good, let's see. We're in offensive stand stance, right? Yeah. Let's get one back here. I would say that's pretty damn good damage. But to be fair, uh, he was also very, very injured. But yeah, Noodle Keeper could be kind of the one on one brawler that is going to take uh, someone from the side. It, as you can see, these guys are dealing quite a bit of damage. to get too close. Moves here. It's both of these guys. Nice little dagger on top of it. Gnome has like 101 attacks. We could even go further by just letting him con continuously attack. Very good. That should kill one of them. Nope. Barely not. Did 
Nice. That little C um, CEO uh, seems to scale with uh, with uh, strengths, which means if Fluffy throws it, it actually deals quite a bit of uh, damage. Three hits, nice. Followed up by two further hits. Followed up by a kill. Cool. Yeah, Noodle Keeper deals good damage. The question is, can you also tank? But we're going to find that out. We wanted him as an off tank. We just need the right helmet for it. Uh, so far, he has a he has a very aggressive helmet on, plus a level one helmet. So that's not really happening. Wow! <laughs> Next group just ran into us. In case you're wondering, no, that is not the same uh, battle. It's already the next one. Battles with five are barely still working out. That didn't really work. Okay, that's the wrong engagement my friend, as opposed to look over here. Very good. No way, he has backline access. They do have a lot of movement. hits <laughs> nice okay Good, since they do have such a long range, the most clever way of dealing with them is killing them before they even have the chance to really attack us. Okay. 
Good hits. And bloodshed on that uh, singer guy. Perfect. Good noodle keeper could showcase how oh, he's basically approaching the enemy from behind. That's a hundred points of damage. Wow. Wow. Okay. So switching to defensive stance. a lot of damage. Yeah, 100 damage and then he came in and uh, did kind of like another 50 uh, points of damage. So they are really good single target DPS, melee DPS. Uh, potentially my idea of letting him become an off tank might not work as well. We're going to find out, but yeah. Applies one poison to any unit dealing melee damage. Hmm. That's actually not too bad, but problem is our helmet is better. As long as this unit is engaged, it has protection, is too good to uh, trade it. The poison uh, thing though is uh, would be funny in a poison build. It's interesting, we're arriving at this island and it appears the first uh, way we have already been ambushed twice like that's really a pirate island and the only pirates that we see somehow ignore us of course a ghost pack all right time to get going we are attacked by the ghost pack as always, Ghost Pack is a little bit uh, different in terms of how you fight them. Uh, the number of hits count, because every single hit gives you a terror stack, and once the terror stacks hit 5, the unit is running from the battlefield. That means classical tank and spank uh, isn't really working, where you are letting like one main tank go in. Uh, instead, what you want to do is break it nicely up into multiple chunks. Good. Got the bear there. Let's give him a good AoE attack. Nice. On to not a kill, but that will. All 
right, our newcomer here. Starts engaging. Triple attack. Bear is surrounded. Takes more damage. I like uh, Noodle Keeper's... Uh, Noodle Keeper's overall DPS. Let's see how well he tanks. Nice hit. We're seeing bleeding. Fire is necessary, so that we're taking the percentage dam uh, damage on the ghost bear's hit points. This is where poison would come in ultra handy, because it chips away so much percentage damage. But burning still works. Alright, we're taking a lot of damage. We're still standing. That's where the reinforcements come in. The stack lord in particular is typically a problem. Ghost wolf crit. Into getting this guy down. Seeing another 65 uh, uh, mm, hit point uh, damage, the bleeding sticks really start uh, going up and up and up. Um, I would like to tank the Ghost Lord with someone else, so Gnome begins to throw. Many small hits eventually get the bear down. It's now in Berserk and that'll be the end of it, finally. Good. This gives us all the valor that we need. Yields burning. Can't fully reach uh, the stag lord. I think what we're going to do in this particular case is we're weakening him. Nah, taunt has no range. We're just standing up here. And Noodle Keeper stays over here. Don't want to engage him near the fog. Two people are going to get hit with the Binding of Terror. These need to stand next to each other. All right. But that is not a problem. Hit the Nightmare. Sure if started with our archer every single hit increases terror stakes Jim unfortunately runs oh, that's not good like I said should have led with the archer How many terror sticks do we have? One. Okay. Which means this might let us run. Oh no, we still have sprint. Okay. Never mind, since they both had the terror application, they will run. 
Good, and here we gotta be careful because multi-hits aren't helpful. But we start with a low amount of terror. Good, almost got him down, and that's it. Fantastic. Could have been a bit of a cleaner fight. I think the ones that are running away will get a wound. Yeah, there we go. Two wounds. But we got... Uh, plenty of uh, mm, ghost leather, which we, by the way, need for our current armor and weapons and so on, so that's okay. And, believe it or not, these guys, four fights in a row, these guys are the ones that we actually need. Good, this will be an interesting episode, as it is all fighting. <laughs> Gotta hatch it over here, I like it. Um... I think we're going to open with this guy, the raider. Good. Enemy pugilist runs up, but doesn't find his target. We, on the other hand, know exactly who our target is. The bomber. Post position, I don't like it. I would have very much thought we would have uh, been able to kill him. I guess unlucky. Minimizing damage uh, from their melee attack. But then passing on burning. There we go, destabilization, and to make sure we're not seeing anything strange going on, we're just blocking that way and engaging with the front line. I like the new uh, stuff that's lying on the ground. Very cool to regularly come in and uh, see new options on the battlefield. It's not always uh, helpful sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't really provide a lot, but it's a nice distraction. Those hatchets, for instance, very good. Okay. And I saved one of the Valor points so that this here could happen. Good hit. Triple hit. 
And I don't think that we can kill him, so rather go defensive stance. Take one hit. Okay, he's not even that bothered. I see. Hoping that would go different. We didn't have a clear shot. Never mind. No extra valor. Both of them nicely from behind. Follows up with making all of you guys orderly. And effectively just standing there. Gets a kill. Did we miss that? Okay, well, my bad. Slightly away because I don't want anyone to burn. Good. We can Eisen. And we're having a very solid position here. Hits for one, which is nothing. We're coming in from the back. Fragile. I like that. Takes extra round, uh, extra damage. Switches to aggressive stance. He's now officially fragile. Pushing this guy into the mud. Not that I think it will matter hugely, but still, out of principle, matter of principle. I put an oil on Jim that he's not getting hit with AoE attacks. I wish it would be clearer specified whether or not that works in this scenario. Because I still, at least from the indication, get the feeling that he very much can be targeted by AoE attacks.
Which would be not what I signed up for, right? Enemy has zero guard, so we're going in defensive stance. Hitting him with uh, fragility, weakening them. And that's okay damage. Yep, yep. Good fight overall, but a couple of uh, things that I that still need answering. For instance, uh, that oil, which basically uh, states that you will become immune. Seems to not be working really. Yeah, so what the oil is uh, saying the user cannot take direct damage from their allies we will need to double check that in one of the future uh, setups because if that doesn't include the AOE then uh, I've completely wasted uh, the oil the whole point of it was to prevent AOE attacks. Okay, I think we're calling it here. Uh, that is the end of today's episode and that's exactly where we are continuing the next time. If you enjoy War Tales uh, with the Pirates uh, DLC, then now is the right time to show it by clicking the like button. See you all in the next episode. Bye bye and yarr.